There's another way that you can voyage across the whole universe, and you don't need a powerful telescope or even a spaceship of your own to do so. What about if you could use your mind to roam across the whole universe? What if you could use your mind to help you understand the mysteries it holds and to find extraordinary, dangerous phenomena hiding out there? That's what my father, Stephen Hawking, has spent his life doing. And that's what our book is all about. It's a journey across space to learn more about the universe in which we live. And it's a journey through physics, the laws that govern that universe, to help us understand it better. George's secret key to the universe is the story of a boy called George, who lives in a very ordinary house in a very ordinary street in a small town. What is unusual about George's house is that his parents are eco-warriors. They're on a campaign to save the planet. And part of that campaign involves having no electrical goods in the house. So George is growing up without a television or a computer. So he hasn't got much to play with at home, except for a pig that his grandmother gave him for Christmas. One day, George meets by accident his new next door neighbours, a little girl called Annie, who's mad about the ballet, here she is, and her father, Eric. Eric is a scientist. And he tells George a little bit about his work. To uncover the secrets of the universe, Eric works with a supercomputer called Cosmos. Cosmos is so powerful and so clever that he can draw you a doorway through which you can walk into any part of the universe you like, provided you're wearing a spacesuit. It's about minus 270 degrees Celsius in outer space, so you'd freeze solid pretty quickly without one. When Eric meets George for the first time. Eric uses Cosmos to show George some exciting events in outer space. He shows George how a star is born from a cloud of dust. It takes tens of millions of years for this to happen, so Cosmos has to speed it up a bit so that George can get home for supper. George sees how the cloud of dust compacts through gravity into a ball, which gets so hot at its heart that it starts to burn, turning it into a star. George sees the whole lifespan of the star and learns how the death of a star throws elements out into space. These elements are the same ones that you and I are made of. George learns that we are all the children of stars. But Eric also tells George that Cosmos is a great secret and he must never tell anyone anything about him. One day, however, George and Annie have a big argument. To prove she's right, and he switches on Cosmos and programs him to look for comets in the solar system. Annie wheeled around to face George. What do you want to see, she demanded. What's the most interesting thing in the universe? George thought hard. Comets, he said. I think comets are the most interesting things in the universe. Annie typed the word comet onto Cosmos's keyboard. Put on your suit, George, quickly, she ordered. It's about to get cold. With that, she hit the button marked enter. Once more, everything went dark. The little beam of brilliant light shot out from Cosmos's screen into the middle of the room, hovered for a second, and then started to draw a shape. Oh, look, said George. Cosmos has drawn a door. I haven't just drawn it, said Cosmos huffily. I'm much cleverer than that, you know. I've made you a doorway. It's a portal. It leads to... Shush, Cosmos, said Annie. She had put on her helmet again and was speaking through the voice transmitter fitted inside. Let George open it himself. By now, George had struggled into the big white suit and glass helmet that Annie had chucked at him. Attached to the back of the suit was a small tank which fed air through a tube in the helmet so he could breathe easily when he was inside it. He put on the big space gloves and boots and then he stepped forward and gave the door a timid push. It flew open, revealing an enormous expanse filled with hundreds of little lights that turned out to be stars. One, in particular, was much bigger and brighter than the others. Wow, said George. There didn't seem to be anything between him and outer space. It looked as though he could just step through the doorway and be there. But where? If he took that small step, where would he be? See that bright star over there? The brightest star of all those you can see, George heard Cosmos reply. It's the sun, 
our sun. It looks smaller from here than when you look at it in the sky. The doorway leads to a place in the solar system which is much farther away from the sun than planet Earth. There is a large comet coming. That is why I've selected this location for you. You will see it in a few minutes. Please stand back from the door. Obviously, I think you can probably guess that the children don't stand back from the door. And in fact, they do quite the opposite and they're very, very naughty and they leap straight through it and land on the comet and go for a ride around the solar system. And during their ride around the solar system, on the comet, and a comet, just so you know, is an ice-covered, rocky fragment from an explosion in the early universe, George and Annie fly past the giant planet Saturn and admire its rings. George discovers that Saturn's rings are not solid, as they appear in pictures, but that close up, they're made of dust and rocks floating in orbit around the giant planet. As their comet approaches Saturn, gravity causes the comet to change its path as it falls towards Saturn. The comet flies on and they approach Jupiter, the largest of all the planets and the one surrounded by most moons. Yet again, because of gravity, the comet falls towards Jupiter. Also, from his journey on the comet, George sees the relative sizes of the planets and learns that our planet, the planet Earth, is so tiny compared to some of the others. And like the astronaut Nick that you heard speaking earlier, George feels very protective of his planet, which seems so small, so fragile, and so very beautiful when you see it from outer space. George sees how important it is to look after our planet and starts to understand that his parents and their campaign may not be so wrong after all. However, George and Annie have been very naughty, sneaking away onto the comet all by themselves, and they have to be rescued by Eric, Annie's scientist father, who has quite a few words to say about kids who run off into outer space when they definitely shouldn't. But later on in the book, when it is Eric himself who needs saving, from the greatest the darkest and the most powerful force in the universe. He finds himself feeling very grateful that George and Annie are as brave and daring as they are, when nothing but them and the cleverness of Cosmos stands between Eric and a black hole. And I think now we are ready to go back live to Cambridge and get the answers to our questions. Are we all ready? Yeah. OK, Andrew, would you like to make the call for us? Hello? Hello, this is Lucy calling back. Um, just to wrap up the final, the final universe-wide version of Who Wants to Be a Cosmic Billionaire. And we're calling back to let you know it is now time to give the answers. Can I ask, I'm going to ask yes. questions. Yeah, um, hello, hello. Can we have a big hello from everyone in the audience? Hello. <laughs> Excellent. Right. The first question was, the first question I asked was, why isn't there any air in the solar system? Air is attracted by gravity to massive objects like planets and the sun. So most of space is empty. So air is attracted by massive objects like planets and the sun, so most of space is empty. We will be putting all the answers, we will be putting your questions and the answers on the website as well. Next question. Do you think there are only life forms on Earth? I think there may well be other life in the universe. And our last question. Our last question to finish off who wants to be a cosmic billionaire, our last and biggest ever question. How did the Big Bang happen? The Big Bang was a tremendous explosion that was the beginning of the universe. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for participating, Dad, live from Cambridge. And so it's goodbye from all of us at the Edinburgh Festival. Thank you, Dad, for being a cosmic billionaire. Thank you, everyone here, for being 
absolutely fantastic Cosmic Billionaires and give yourself all a very big hand.